All right, with my guy Matisse. What's up, brother? Yes, sir. That little stand-up podcast. How we, we feeling today, brother? Brother, it's a beautiful view. Miami in our back. Jeez. So we're going to talk about sales today. We're going to talk about what we're doing in terms of business, yep. in terms of scaling sales team, all that good shit, and in terms of investment. So I'm excited to share all that with you guys. And yeah, Brandon, if you want to start off. For sure. What are the things that when you started off or even right now, going through everything that you've gone through, building up your sales company, sales training company, what are a few things that you developed in terms of habits that are going to help other people that are just starting out? Um, in terms of business wise or just getting good at sales? I'd say let's start with getting good at sales. Okay. For getting good at sales, you know, it's like it's reps. Take as many calls as you possibly can. That's the best way to get good. Yeah. You know, you look at all these programs, I'll just throw you like a course and say, get good at sales. Yeah. I don't really like that because yeah, it's good to learn the, the framework and the fundamentals of sales, but you yeah. gotta actually start selling to get good, right? I and mean, I think that's that's something that a lot of people mess up. They get into analysis paralysis. Yeah. They just need to jump in and start selling. That's the best way to learn. Love it, love it. And how many reps did you put in in terms of sales calls for you to be at a good point where, hey, I feel comfortable on sales calls? Well, dude, it's, here, it's a little different for everybody. You know, yeah. some people are natural, some people it's gonna take a little longer to get good. Me, I like to say I'm a natural, you know, in third grade I was making 100 bucks a day selling bracelets at recess. Well, so, that's like, good. It's just, you're naturally good or, but you could also get Get good that's a big misconception you know like they're saying you're either good at sales or you're not no yeah. i think anyone can get good at sales i think people have a misconception to where like all right if you have good conviction like yeah of course you'd be good on a b2c offer but like people that are monotone and not as hyped up they could still do good on like b2b offers which i don't think a lot of people understand but yeah 100 percent. i mean for me like so we're, we're talking more about tonality and just like bringing out emotion like in the prospect for me like being too hyper i i started out hyper in sales i didn't get much sales yeah so for me the the more slow i am the more i'm like really trying to recover the pain of the prospect and tie it with the product that i'm selling 100%. i feel like i'm a much better salesman like what what is your thoughts on that like in yeah, regards to I mean, just an alley and all that you know it depends on the offer depends yeah. on the market you're selling to like i mean for like a more b2c offer like biz op you know more hype is is, is a little better you can yeah. resonate with the the buyers a little better but for like a b2b offer like they don't want to be hype sold they just want to know the fuck like exactly what yeah. you're doing they don't care about the hype 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 they just want to know what you do your deliverables and your price points and like kind of how you're going to work so nice it just depends like i've had people that couldn't sell b2c offers that accelerated on b2b offers mm -hmm. um just for the viewers that don't know what that is b2c is business to consumer and b2b is business to business so like are you selling to business owners or are you selling to regular day people love it love it and you mentioned something about yeah learning the framework are you more of a framework type of guy are you more of a script type of guy like i started off with like yeah. just a framework and i sort of apply that to sales for sure i think you got to start with a script yeah. and know the framework you need to do both in the beginning but eventually when you start selling the same thing over and over to the same people you'll yeah. get the script and the framework dialed into your brain so yeah. and then you could just naturally flow one thing though i think is important like when you're doing the script when you're learning the framework still don't make it sound like you're reading the script word for word because yeah. then it's like what are you doing man you sound like a robot we exactly have ai do that stuff you know pretty much <laughs> and sales is all just like building a relationship with the person like that. I think a lot of people overcomplicate. At the end of the day, you're just talking to somebody. There's another human being. Right? Yeah. What, like do you, for, what do you think on that? Yeah, for me, sales is just an exchange. Like at a at the most fundamental point, you have something that they want, they have money, which is something you want, and it's just an exchange. And mm -hmm. that's basically what you're trying to convey is like pitching your offer. If your offer is good, just present your offer in a way that like they like it, and that's it. Pretty much sure. It's just an exchange, but you obviously, the point is you're building the gap from where they're at right now to where yeah. they want to go during the sales conversation to 100%. make them have that urgency to take action on your product whilst you're on the call. 100%. And that's done over, like if you're depending on the product, the higher the ticket, the more sales process and sales like steps that you have. Like Longer you have one takes. step close, two step close. Yeah. So that really Really depends on that but and how you structure yeah like your framework as well for sure but. i think another important thing we could talk about is ethical selling yeah so like not selling crappy products or services and like selling to people who don't need it there are sales reps like that but i think sales kind of has a negative connotation like that because it's like oh well it's just like just people pushing you to buy something yeah it comes down to like you know if, if you believe in what you're selling yeah you believe it's going to impact who you're selling it to then like why wouldn't you want that person to get on board you know 100 percent. I, I would say this there are good and bad offers in the space and for me what I consider good is are people actually getting results that you're saying that they're going to get. People oversell in the space and that's where they get a bad reputation and it bites them in the off. They can start selling good the first six months to a year. After that, we, I see like Mike Barron, people like that, that just like fall off just because, yeah, they oversell during the sales call 
and then delivery sucks. So you really have to sell based on how good your offer is. And if your offer is good, you can oversell, you can push, like 100%. that kind of thing. Yeah, because at scale, I mean, you're going to get to word of mouth. Yeah. And it could be super good or it could be super yeah. bad. You know what I mean? One thing I don't like about programs, though, is like when you sell it to some people, it's not a done for you service. Yeah. Like it, it requires some work from the buyer. Yeah. So it, it sucks because when people don't put in work, they're like, they'll want to blame external things like yeah. the course sucks, the program sucks. Yeah. They won't want to look in the mirror. And I think that's a big problem. They, they won't blame themselves. You know what I mean? They yeah. want to blame everything else. But at the end of the day, it's like, if it's proven, if you have, if that program has loads of testimonials, like it's yeah. worked for loads of people, the person should just be like, it's not working for me. It's, it, it, it works. That's yeah. undeniable, right? It's just like, what am I not doing? And I True. think a lot of people need to adopt that mindset. True. And what, what do you see as the main factors of people not working, like it, working out in sales? Like, well, what's the main factor of them not like being able to succeed in this space? Because really, like, if you put yourself to it, like for me, like it's 100% guarantee that you're going to be able to find an offer that's going to work. But what, what are your, sure. what are the things you see that makes them I don't just, succeed. I basically. just think come in with the mindset of that there's no other option. Like, yeah. you know, like Amazon FBA drops yeah. you, like all these stuff that people tell you to do. Like, it's not going to work if you don't know sales yeah. to a degree, yeah. right? Like if, if you can't get money in and give something, like you can't run a business. So you need to understand so sales is the foundation to every single company. Without sales, yeah. it's a nonprofit. So Pretty I think much. there's no other way. You have to learn sales if you want to make money online and like 95% of the things about making money online. Now you could obviously get good at uh, something else like, you know, marketing or building a website or something and then get a sales guy and learn sales but if you're gonna run a business yeah. your, your priority is driving revenue to pay for overhead True. so you need to know that process in order to actually run a business otherwise you should retire from CEO and do something else yeah you should uh, well get a sales job if you can't sell you know <laughs> that, 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 that's what you guys should do if you guys are struggling at, at like sales you guys are running your own company maybe like a marketing agency whatever it may be I would yep. highly consider just focusing on the sales aspect joining a coaching company where the sales cycle is short even fucking selling fitness even though I saw it that's how I saw it fitness uh, coaching yeah fitness coaching oh, yeah. like 30 minute like sales calls 45 minute sales calls that gets the reps in it's low ticket it's low barrier to entry and it's just like easy to do you can partner up with influences there's tons of offers on facebook groups and that leads to my next question is where can people find the best offers online because that's really like that's, what i see a lot of people struggle with it's gotten they, worse yeah it's gotten worse it's gotten worse bro there's a lot of you know a lot of scams in facebook groups trying to get you to do bitcoin mining yeah. and stuff nowadays it used to be better when i first got in the space yeah. like facebook groups were pretty good um it's definitely become saturated and like just so many crappy offers and there's nothing wrong with crappy offers either like if you have no experience and no training that's a good way to get your foot in the door right but if you want you know that 10 20 30k a month ote then you're gonna have to either have training or a good track yeah record because no one's gonna want to hire you with no training experience if you have like nothing if they have a really good offer with a good OTE, right? Exactly. Um, so the best place to find them, I mean, you can find good ones in Facebook groups. The problem is you have to like sort through all the crappy ones and try to find the good OTE ones. Yeah. And it's also, you need a network because the people who are, like, are really high level, looking for high level sales positions, they're not going out themselves and looking for it. No. They just like hire an agency like, hey, and you can speak more on this as well, but they're like, hey, I need a sales rep. So they talk to someone to go get the sales rep. It's not them themselves like posting the posting in the Facebook group. You know? Exactly. If you guys like network a lot in the Facebook groups wherever it be all or on twitter where wherever you guys are at like in the Point online space good. yeah you guys want to speak to recruiters most of the time within sales training agencies most of the time they have recruiters my boy here like you have a recruiter or like you, yeah, you so, do the recruiting yeah, and no, i got a software now yeah so and you got a software yeah, that, that tells tell the people a bit more about it yeah so i mean it's a software where basically you can just come on board and not have to sort through all the crappy offers you could just get instantly instant access to the pre-vetted opportunities so you know they're legit now when i say pre-vetted i don't mean you know you can make 30 50k a month i just mean like they're legit companies, they're legit position, and they're not no Bitcoin mining or anything like that. There's also going to be there's high level opportunities in it as well that you can get access to. You simply just go on the businesses post the job post, explain yeah. the details. You just send them a message, get on an interview, and you don't have to explain your experience or resume or send an interview to or show live sales calls. It's already on your profile, so it's all on your profile. You don't have to keep re-explaining to every single recruiter. It's just all there. They can see it in 30 seconds. So. Love it, love it. And I actually, before I sold my agency, I was You're building software. Yeah. yeah, I was building a software <laughs> just like that. The original idea was Closeify that I modeled and then I, I wanted to sell exit my agency just because I wanted to move to something better yeah a couple months ago like six months ago I was focused on forex I still am I'm mostly doing like automated trading mm -hmm. with a bot that we have that's earning like two to five percent a month so that's yep. just conservative I saw a stat for trading it said 90% of trades are done by an algorithm that blew my mind yeah 
Yeah, because I mean, it, it takes a lot of work to sit on the charts, and most of the high level traders are just trading their own money, trading like like private equity yeah. money. So yeah, it's a very competitive space. Like a lot of people fail. Like ninety percent of traders lose ninety percent of their funds within ninety days. So that, that's, that's sort of that's the, the behind rule. it. So, but yeah, I'm trading, and then I well after I sold my agency, I focus on a new offer right now with Al Johnson. We do exotic call automation. Yeah, talk and about that. Yeah, it's cool. Exotic call put automation. Them on, put them on yes. game right so, now. So if you guys don't know what exotic call automation is, we acquire basically fully financed vehicles just like you were about to buy a house you're required from the banks to have a down payment and pretty much the 75 percent loan payment from the banks that they give you they they loan you 75 percent, but you need a down payment with us we're able to fully finance the car That's put great. it on the road for you we make the monthly payments on the car and you're earning profit we do a 60 40 profit split on that and i chose that kind of vehicle and that kind of offer we created from scratch like two months ago and we, we already have 20 investors over 30 to 60k a piece gotcha. each investor that's fire all paid in full and just so i'm clear just to try and simplify yeah. it it's like you can get a car financed from the bank yeah. regular day person yeah and you will handle the car and yeah. rent it out and get people to rent it out yeah. and then you'll just send basically passive income to them pretty much every single month paychecks and we cover like any anytime the car doesn't get rented out for a month which doesn't happen because mm -hmm. in our fleet like we have rappers that use it we have a ton of film got production sets yeah we got we got demand for it that otherwise we wouldn't add it to our fleet like we cover the monthly payments for the investors so there's like worst case they don't make any money best case they make that's a shit cool. ton of profit that's so cool. that's one thing that i'm doing the second thing is we've also with al he has connections with gold mines in africa where we're buying gold for forty two thousand, selling yeah, it for seventy two thousand, uh -huh. and we're guaranteeing like 20 25 percent 20 percent to investors we're, we're still working out the offer because we haven't saw that yet he's earning money with it right now yeah just connecting the buyers and the sales mm -hmm. we're looking to be the buyers ourselves bring on investments from america and yeah, pretty much run that whole automation ourselves. Sounds crazy, man. You're kind of drop shipping gold from a foreign country, dude. Pretty and much. Bringing it to Dubai. Pretty much. <laughs> and selling funny. it all. So, and yeah, that no, for me. Cool. No one thinks like that, dude. When they get into online money, they're not thinking like, how can I get some gold and sell it yeah. to some guy in Dubai? They're like, all right, how do I build a website? And yeah, bro. Run? But th this is what I would say. Like, these kind of opportunities that happen because I, I was networking and yeah. I was at a certain point where my skill set. I was able to meet someone that had all the connections, all these resources, and we just matched, you know? And now we're fucking cool. off to the races. We're scaling that offer up. Within the next two weeks, it's gonna be launched That's once cool. we go to Africa. So yeah, a lot of shit is happening. And I talk a lot on my channel about networking, man. I yeah, wanna get your two cents on this. Like, I just learned, started learning the power of this recently yeah. out here in Miami, but yeah. like, it's crazy, dude. Like, I, I came here just like a couple weeks ago. I know I knew one guy. Yeah. Now I've got like 15 contacts and I'm hanging out with them and stuff. Like, yeah. it's crazy, it's just instant. Well, I would say networking is amazing once you have a skill set. Like if, if I didn't know sales, if I didn't know marketing, if I didn't have like any valuable skill set to yeah. offer to another person, even like just, yeah, or, or background, which is like people respect, you know? Mm -hmm. Like who would give a fuck about me in, in terms of networking? Yeah. You have to be valuable enough to be able to network with high level people. 100%. And that's where you develop in the skill of sales, marketing, copywriting, whatever you, your skill set is, videography, whatever that is. You guys, bringing that to the table whilst you're networking with people is gonna elevate the game, so. 100%, otherwise you have nothing to bring to the yeah. table. And that's, that's, that's really crucial. And that's a really good tip is like, if you're networking with somebody just give them free value yeah like show your expertise just give them free value because like just the other day i met a guy probably uh like four days ago yeah next day he's like yo bro i need a closer because he knew what i did at that yeah. point and i'm like cool bro just gave one for free boom why not because i value the connection over the few grand i'd make off staff yeah. and a closer because networking is just power overall and you know he knows other people he knows other people i gave him free value he gets a good closer he gets results his friends might need a closer then you know there you go and it's and you don't want to, another good thing is you don't just want to network to like try to get something from people. Yeah. Network just to network and stuff will just come. Just give free value and it'll come back. Exactly. And one thing I would say for that, your online presence is more powerful than ever, especially like with you right now posting content, me posting content about it, like on our yeah. stories, our posts on Facebook, YouTube, like you want to be very discoverable mm -hmm. to other people. So that way when they're like, you meet them in the first time, like you take their Instagram, you take whatever, their LinkedIn, yeah. whatever, they see your content, they're going to be engaged with that and they're going to reach, want to reach back out. Has that happened to you before? Do that. I met five days ago. Yeah. You too, bro. Yeah. He, he, he messaged me. He's like, dude, I cannot get on Instagram without seeing your ads. Yeah. So I'm like, yes, sir. The retargeting, baby. So and that's good. That's like, you're popping in their consciousness, right? Like you, I'm yeah. not having to text him and he's still getting value from me just through my reels. Yeah. Right. And like, that's cool. And like reels and content creation is networking. Yeah. Like you were saying, man, cause like it gets you out there. You're talking to people, whether it, and it's passive, yeah. you're passively speaking and networking, you know, it's just in person is completely different, but like, that's a start, you know? Yeah. Like I would say the content just warms people up and it's just a powerful tool that like, 
you guys, most people overcomplicate the content. Like really it's just, well, what would you say are different forms of content that are easy to do that people at home can be doing regardless of what they sell? I think people overcomplicate the process of yeah. making content. I think that, you know, they think they need a good camera, they need a good mic. Dude, I yeah. started with a little iPhone 8, just yeah. sitting and like propping it up on a, a cup. Yeah. Like, you don't need the, all the equipment. Yeah, same, just man. Just start recording, bro. For our first hundred videos was with this shitty phone. I filmed this bitch yeah. and now like, now my YouTube's going better. You know, like, you I go. get it. you get better at it, the more reps you do. And that's what, that's why we Now we got this. a camera. <laughs> Let's fucking go. Yes, sir. <laughs> it all you just gotta start. That's like the main thing. That's with anything in life, not just content. Yeah. Like just put the foot put the foot forward. If it doesn't make sense, that's fine. It'll make sense later. Everything will add up if it you know what I mean? So hundred percent. And one thing that ties into everything that we covered is reps are key. Putting in the reps are key. Not focus so much on the end goal in regards to where you guys want to go in terms of sales numbers. Like for me, when I first started off, I want to make like 10k a month. I was so focused on making 10k a month that uh, I wasn't really looking at the steps I need to do, the actions, like how many calls I was yeah. meant to do how many reach outs, whatever the number was like for your product or service, you want yeah. to map that numbers out, the action steps, not the result steps. 100%. I'm about to blow a lot of people's minds. You know, you can't just think about 100K in your bank and just going to no. fall at it. No, no, no. <laughs> you you got to figure out what can I do or what skill can I learn yep. to attract 100K into my bank and get that in my bank. Correct. Not just like, how can I have that number in my bank? You got to do something to get that, of course. But having a lot, like a goal, like an objective, like that's tangible number, that's still good. But like yeah. question, like it's really just like, I get asked this all the time. It's like, bro, I don't know what business to build. I don't know what to get into. And it's like, dude, how much are you trying to make? What type yeah. of lifestyle are you trying to have? Because based on what life you're trying to live, that'll tell you what type of business you need to build. Yeah, 100%. I mean, so what, what, what is your question? Like, how do people decide on which field to go into? Is that more so your question? Well, no, that's, no, people would ask me that. And I'm like, well, what are yeah. you trying to do with your life? Yeah. Like, are you trying to go all in on work? Are you yeah. trying to have like a work-life balance? If you're trying to have work-life balance, I wouldn't build a business. I'd maybe become a sales rep or yeah, something. Yeah, be a closer. Closers are the laziest fuckers I know. Like, <laughs> they just sit down, they close, and that's it. You know, they no, wait for, for the leads. Yeah. Like, I'm low-key that myself. Like, I like leads coming in, you know, you close them. <laughs> but no, I'm more of a business owner, like, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm always working. I'm always, like, trying to figure out what's the next thing I I need to do but closers are more like hey what, what's the next lead i need to close you know it's 100%. a different mindset you're not it's one mindset it's one mindset. closed deals it's closed you're building deals. A business you got to be all over yeah you're, you're focused so on the hats. front end the back end the recruiting yep. everything yep. like the hr like like just yep. a whole lot of different things that you have to do within the business as a business owner but the first step is yeah learning sales doing 100%. marketing like if you do the sales and marketing you're, you're like golden to any Cracks. organization 100 yeah. percent, dude that's a middle of month skill set that's what makes a business sales and marketing so yeah. if you got that unlocked you could basically take over any industry if you not to out compete your competitors so. Pretty much. But it's also offer as well. Off, offer is very important. You can't do the same thing as your competitors and expect to beat them because you're just going to yeah. get up to them. Actually, you can't even get up to them because they've been doing it for longer. So you have like, to have some type of edge. Um, a better offer. Surpass. Just a better, a better offer. Yeah. Better offer and a better way of Marketing. serving the problem, you know? Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. What 100%. would you say are like great offers in the space and how do you decide whether an offer is good or not? Like what would you like say as about a, that? For like for a sales rep? For a sales rep, yeah. I mean, it just depends. It goes back to like how much you're trying to make. Like what are you interested in already? Let, like if you like, if you're spiritual, so you're like fitness and like a fitness coach offer. Yeah. Like you're trying to make 10K a month OT, okay. Well, I would just say, though, what, that. what are the offers that make the most money? Like you're, you're trying to make a hundred grand a month as a closer, a mil a year. Like, well, what are these kind of offers? Like even let's just say 50K to 100K. Well, I mean, well, you could do that with a good coaching offer. Like if yeah. you're on Grant Cardone's offer, yeah. Tony Robbins offer, you could get that, those types of OTEs. It's just yeah. like, I was talking to a guy the other day. I think it was uh, it was a Forex trading mentorship course, yeah. right? I think he had one of his closers doing 100K a month. Like, yeah. like it, commission yeah right what's funny is he said he only did that for two months and then he's like he got a big head and he's like you know what i'm good now he just yeah. walked away from 100k a month closing deals dude i mean it could be really anything it just depends like like the, there's levels to it like you could do coaching you could make 5k a month you could do coaching on a better offer and do 100k a yeah month. it just depends what, would you, what are your thoughts on that i would say operative like one thing i learned from alex and Mosey was opportunity vehicle which opportunity vehicle you're in at the lower end you're selling like trading time for dollar you're in like b2b b2c offers but it's more like you're selling in person, you're, it's one-on-one, -on -one, it's like, it's low ticket office, basically, on that end. And then the more you scale up, the more you go into investment products, mm -hmm. which is where you got shorter sales cycle, higher paying clients, yeah. and it's just overall like more profit you for you as a closer. So we're talking yeah. about like, I don't know. Well, for me, that's why I chose my that's specific it. offer, exotic call automation, the gold automation, just because it's small sales cycles. You want to think whatever offer you're looking at, does have short sales cycle? Because yeah. I want to, I want the reps, especially if you guys are starting out, don't go for like long B2B cycles where you're fucking contacting the guys 
I did that. Three months, six yeah, months. Yeah, three months, six yeah, months, a year, two years. Like, Crazy. what the fuck? Like, yeah, you get a salary with that, but you're not really developing the, the front end skill yeah. set. You want it like quick transactions, yeah. quick sales. So short sales cycles, like fast sales cycles. And then we got a uh, fucking high ticket offer. Yeah. So investment products that those are great at that. And then final one is- A market with money. Yeah, a like market with money. have money. High ticket offer. Yeah, so th those are the main two, I would say. For I'm sure. missing one, but that, it'll come to me eventually. <laughs> <laughs> so that, right. that's pretty much it. But yeah, no, I think definitely like having a market you're selling to with money as well yeah. like not trying to sell to broke people and convincing them that they need something like that's not no. ideal but it's always a start yeah but, uh, but yeah no definitely like investors you know they have money like the opportunity uh cost of them just leaving that in their bank and not putting it into assets is yeah. gonna cost some more due exactly. to inflation and stuff like that so yeah for me the best office is selling money at a discount hey this is <laughs> where your money's at right now this is where it could be using this investment like that that's easy to sell selling money at a discount for me that's the easiest that's why like people love coaching done for you coaching uh services like biz op offers where you're putting money with something and you're expecting X amount in return, you know? 100%. So, and that's easier to sell than like, let's just say a sales skill, a sales training program where even though it's great, like that's the best thing they could do for themselves, but most people are lazy. They want the done for you solution. Yeah. So that's why you're going from done, a uh, do it yourself, done with you and done, done for, for you. you. And then yeah. the more done for you it is, the more you can charge and the easier it is to sell. The only thing that I don't like about done for you services is it's harder to scale because it needs to be more scale with yeah. people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you, you only have, you can only take a limited amount of clients yeah because if you're doing it for them you know yeah. what i mean done with you that's very scalable or done for or uh do it yourself do it yourself like most scalable yeah that's that's, a, like, that's an online coaching yeah. yeah no that's why i like the coaching and like the coaching margin is 100 percent usually yeah. like um, minus, well, minus, minus ads rep. yeah minus, ads, yeah ads, ads sales rep yeah yeah but like for the sales rep you can get a high commission rate on a, yeah. on a coaching offer because the margins are high so yeah that, that's what's cool about the coaching industry but no i totally agree yeah i would say for the coaching industry if your margins around 50 percent like off the paying delivery costs, ads, and fucking sales guys. If you're at 50, like 50, 55. I know cool Gordon is at like what, 55%? Like when he was scaling doing like a mill a month, he was what at like- he still at that though? 60%, not like he is. He, he is. is. Yeah, yeah. Even at 3.5 mil a month, so. I think the power of high ticket is, is really good when you're running ads too, yeah. because you could spend 10K, but if your offer price is 15, you just need one sale out of yeah. like the thousands of leads you get. Yeah, like you don't need to close that many to like no. make your money back and more. So, and then with high ticket, you get one sale, you got more money to ramp back into ads. So that's what I like about the high ticket. But, exactly. Uh, and I want to go over like for business owners mostly. For me, what I see people when people are making like a hundred grand a month, I see them spending around like ten grand a month. Doing a mill a month, it's more like a hundred grand a month to make fucking a mill. Like, what, what what do you see the stats being in terms of how much you need to spend on ads to get in return? Like, given that obviously you sell. See, I'm not time. really good at my. I got a marketing agency. Yeah, I'm the sales. But like, yeah. um, what I've seen is like, I mean, I don't know, man. Like when I first started, like in the very beginning of running my own ads myself. Yeah. I mean, within the first few days, I spent uh, it was like one sixty and got eighteen hundred. So yeah. I wasn't crazy but it's just like you don't gotta spend a lot it just depends because as you scale up your marketing uh budget yeah. your margins will go down because at scale that's just that's standard yeah, yeah i know it, it, that's a loaded question because it just depends on your offer it depends yeah. on what you're selling, who you're selling to. Because like, what are the industry average uh, margin rates? Like, you I would say for, for coaching, like if you're getting like a 5X return, like that's a good, that like if you're selling a coaching offer with a salesperson, a high ticket salesperson on, on the front end, like and you're selling a 5K offer, like 5X return on your money, you spend a thousand, make 5K back. Like I would say that's a good like oh, yeah, that's standpoint. Ideal. I yeah. mean, dude, at scale, like 2X is good. Like, yeah, 2X. If, if you're spending 100K a month and you're getting 2X, I'll, I'll take that. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah, 2X on the lower budget, so yeah. that's not as good. But yeah. Exactly. And I'm new to marketing as well. This isn't a conversation for me, but. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, but yeah, no, in terms of sales, uh, I, th I think we covered a lot of ground. Like, is there anything else that we didn't cover that you want to go over? I mean, dude, I could do this for 10 hours. So. Yeah. <laughs> we got <laughs> We got stuff to do though. Yes, sir. So guys, I would say you guys are just starting out in sales. Focus on, yeah, getting sales training, getting placed on a good offer through the sales training company that you're with. Like my man right here, his company. And yeah, like you guys can be in a better position a month, a year. It took me a year to be decent at sales, two sure. years to really be good. And then year three is really when I started making like fucking, yeah, well, what I'm making now, half a mil. Yeah. Like, and where can people hit you up? Uh, you can hit me up on Instagram, Matisse Fitz with two Zs. And two you can Zs. reach out. Yeah, you can yes, reach sir. out to me, say exotic car automation if you guys are interested in getting an exotic car for yourself that we rent out right. for you. Or gold automation if you're looking to like make 20% return on any money that you put in. Uh, we do 100K and up, but we finance 100K for you through the oh, banks. Yeah. Bank of America right over there. We finance <laughs> through the banks, baby. So hit guys, me up if you're interested. And then go. my boy. If you guys want to get into high ticket sales and you want to learn it, you can DM me training on Instagram, Brennan Swank. 
with two K's at the end. And um, yeah, if you also already have experience in sales and you're just looking for an opportunity, then you can go to repconnect.io and then you can get instant access to my opportunities in the pipeline. So let's fucking go, my guy. Yeah, I appreciate you coming up. Yes, sir. And fellas, this was Miami for you. Woo! Let's fucking go.